Perfect. Okay. So let's start with our diaphragmatic breathing. So let's first take a few deep breaths in and out. In and out. Okay. So I'm going to have you create um, a monologue in response to a topic for 30 seconds. Okay, so, um, first one, if you could have any superpower, what would it be and why? Um, I suppose a good superpower would be um, time travel, because then you could go back and edit mistakes in your life and, you know, do a whole quantum leap type thing and maybe fix some of history's blunders. <clears throat> At the very least, you could get some good, um, stock purchase decisions going in and become rich, um, and then buy your other powers like Batman. Um, That's funny. Um, okay, wait, so even though I just told you this, we should just focus on the breathing. So if you want to just remember, try to remember um, when Claire came over last time and she was like, on your exhale, try to just say as much as you can on that exhale. But like, so like, t make sure that you're talking on the exhale will help with your breathing, okay? And I do sort of have that pattern in my normal speech where I like, don't breathe much and hold on yeah. to the air. And, and Which is really common. I do the same I, I thing too. I forget to breathe a lot. Just like sitting so on my just, computer, I'll be like... So just <sighs> any type of like... Um. So it's almost like I'm trying to... <laughs> it's almost like I'm trying to waste my breath rather than conserve it. Yeah. Or for me, what would be waste? But so, so when you are... If you can think about it... <laughs> I'm like, it's not going to spill. We've tested I know, seriously. <laughs> um... When you're thinking, if you can think about it, that when you're taking your inhale, when you, if you can focus on taking your inhale, and then just on the exhale, just to say words. If you, if you need to take another breath afterwards, if you can't say your whole sentence, that's okay. You take another <laughs> breath, okay? But that was still good. Next one is, if you could take a vacation anywhere in the world for any length of time, where would you go and why? <coughs> Um, I would like to go to Amsterdam and basically check out some of their weed tourism. Um, I used to always want to like move to Amsterdam when I was like a you know a big college stoner and would just think about pot and like nothing else. Like we're gonna move to Amsterdam. Um, and you know nowadays it's it's the novelty almost isn't there because it's legal in DC, but um, it's, it's not the same thing. <clears throat> Next one is, if you could live anywhere, where would you live and why? I've actually put a lot of thought about where to live, and I've never been able to figure out a place where things would be better enough to leave my life here. Um, I used to just look at the continents and be like, they're all awful continents. Maybe South America is the only one that I could stand going to. Um, so, I mean, for a long time, I used to want to, you know, live in Amsterdam. I used to want to live in Arizona. Um, and uh, I have no idea now. Is that a phone call? It was the timer going off. Oh, great. Um, okay. Tell me about where you grew up. Um, I grew up in Lake Ridge, which is a subdivision of Woodbridge, Virginia. It was kind of like the um, upper middle class neighborhood and surrounded by middle class neighborhoods so you know people would be like oh you're rich but I was like we're not really that rich like uh, you know my dad uh, yeah um, and so um, it, it was kind of cool in that we had um, like a reservoir in the back that you could walk through the woods and get to and swim in and there'd be dead animals in it and you'd be like this is this is our drinking water that's disgusting okay um I feel like faker when I talk than I feel like that. I yeah. feel faker than when I used to talk. I didn't feel as fake. Interesting. Well, I think maybe you just have to get used to it. You know, like. Yeah. Uh, 
Also, like, you're just focusing on so many things right now, so that's also probably a contributing factor. Just plus that. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think of some other ones because we've done these. Tell me about what your favorite holiday is. Um, my favorite holiday is, is um, New Year's Eve. Um, I like going to big parties and connecting and meeting lots of people. And it seems like New Year's parties draw out a lot of people who don't come to parties a lot, so you get a chance to meet different people rather than the same people who are like, oh, you like to go to parties. I see you at every party I go to, no matter who it is. Um, so I kind of like that mix. I also really like ha um, Halloween because um, the whole costume thing and people kind of getting to express themselves without judgment is kind of a cool thing. And um, to me, uh, you know, every day is Halloween anyway. So. Good. Okay, two things. One, I need you to uncross your legs. And then to keep your arms down. I'm sorry. Okay. Um... What are your plans for this weekend? Um, this weekend I'm going to a 1920s Prohibition themed party. It actually has no alcohol in it, um, which is funny. They're, they're, they're having some people serve virgin drinks, and I was kind of volunteered. Like, I could be one of the servers, but I didn't hear back. Um, you know, comps for free tickets, that'd be nice. Um, and then Saturday, I don't even know what we're doing. We might have friends over to my house. Uh, we might have a game night or, or watch cartoons night. I haven't had friends over in my house in months, really, besides our parties, so it would be nice to have a smaller night. Good. How, how come you haven't had friends over recently? Um, just uh, been spending more time with uh, my girlfriend or Carolyn. Um, Is Carolyn your wife? Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then, um, like, the place is a mess, and we've been having parties, like, I think every five weeks. Wow. And so I still get to see people somewhere and just falling out with my normal crew, like the regulars. Yes. I just like just like I've got to walk beside and can't stand yeah, sure. like, individually. On to you. Should we yeah. really want us? Um, you guys can just, everybody can just sit in the normal okay. area and then so. I'll just do the, because the last station is now doing the thing. Okay. So I just think it'll be. We already have. We already did it. What? Yeah. She likes to keep her job. You guys already did that? Yeah. Um, if anyone wants donuts, munchkins. Oh, was there only one? Probably not. That's okay then. Don't be too excited. I'm going to take one. Three down on one end and the other end. It's Chris. I have my computer. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> you can look at it on the Well, if you're not relaxed, I'm sorry. Huh? We didn't really do so much relaxing, but I also know she doesn't really like it. Yeah, I don't really. Well, we did the massage. I just my eyes are watering and I feel tired. And I'm like, this is too much. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I've, I've like yawned and, and like, do you my mind eyes are I'm going to turn off. No, it's okay. I've gotten like the tired tears every time. <laughs> All right, I'm going to do um, the relaxation. Tell me about yeah. your favorite thing you, about spring. Do you need my shoes still? Is this not a what? Your favorite thing about spring. Uh, what's your favorite season in Long Island? Um, I really kind of like summer, even though I hate the heat and it's so oppressive and uncomfortable. Or at least you get to take your clothes off to be oppressed instead of having to bundle up like 45 layers and wearing a stupid hat all the time. Like, um, and like camping and there's just so many more parties and people do things, festivals, and days when you can go in your underwear at night and be comfortable. Okay. All right, we're going to go on to oral evidence. So do you want to do a few mean, 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 Pete, <laughs> Pete, mean, So you can feel the vibration. Mm. Mm. <laughs> laughing at me. <coughs> um.
You what? I think some other exercises too. Oh, really? Like, like, like what? Like, 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 yeah, because you can feel the vibration there. Yeah, it's sure too. Do you feel the vibration? Mm -hmm. That's what you should not feel it back completely, but um, it's, it's definitely more like sharp. Yeah. With the SU. And it, it tickles more. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to have you respond to these um, given a problem, and I want you to think about it, analyze it, everything, everything but um, right now it focuses pitch and oil resonance. <coughs> um, so yeah, I'm going to try to have you respond for a minute. A long time. We I don't think we've done a minute yet. Okay. And so the first one is your computer breaks down. Um. So if my computer breaks down, I assume that we're talking <coughs> like it won't let me turn on at all. And if that's the case, um, I press the power button and I see if the computer actually comes on. I've been in a situation where the power button wouldn't turn the computer on. So I unplugged it and plugged it back in, and then when I pressed the power button, it caught on fire. That wasn't fun. I've also been in a situation where the power wouldn't come on because the actual switch in the power button went bad. And I had to buy another power switch for like 2 or $3 and just replace the switch. It was kind of one of the weirder computer repairs in my life. And so, you know, assuming that the power actually comes on, um, sometimes there'll be an error code in, in your BIOS, and you need to look that up in your motherboard documentation. Um, my motherboard's fancy. It has a little display, a little tiny two-character display on it to display a specific error code you can look up. <coughs> That's been super useful in certain situations, rather than just, what does five beeps mean? Okay. Beep all And then, what, did you do something before to see the average of that? Mm-hmm. 185, I keep getting like 180. Okay, okay. Well, that's what your target is. It is, it is. Um, I do like that, the stopping and starting it for each time, because then we can really see. I wish it auto-saved, because to actually save you'd have to do it. Oh, yeah, but you don't have to save everything. True. Um, that's okay. Good. That was good. There was definitely when I, I'm not sure what you're doing, but just like me going like this, <clears throat> it makes your pitch go so much higher. But does it feel phony when you do that? It, it's more... More exertful, less yeah. natural, less like I'm talking and more like I'm performing on stage. Yeah, maybe I'm trying. I'm thinking that maybe over time it's gonna become more natural though. Yeah. The more you do it, because it'll become less natural. Yeah. But I definitely can see that naturalness because if I were to go like, I can't even know. I'm crying while I increase or Earl Red. You know, like I'm definitely thinking way more about it. So. <laughs> yes. I was like, are you sure you don't want to start voice therapy? <laughs> No, you're good. I spelled it twice already. So, do we go three? With the stopper. So we're working on oral resonance, and we're doing it for a minute. I just have a question now that we took care. So does that mean that eight minutes total at least has to be done with this? Do we have time for three? Can we done? Because it's going to seem like a long time. Okay, just curious. What's the Oh, actually, you know what? We were supposed to be doing it for two minutes this time. Because we were able to do it for one minute last time. Level before is responding with steps for a task. Or I don't have to go up to two minutes left. But I did that already. I already did 30 seconds, one minute. Okay, let's try to do this for two minutes now. Which is a lot, but... <coughs> So this problem is, is that you slip and fall. I don't think I have two minutes of material for that. <laughs> I know. Like the computer I can go on for two minutes. But, um, <clears throat> Just try it. <laughs> okay, so I feel I, I, I feel like slipping and falling isn't really a problem that has two minutes of problem solving tasks oriented with it. Like, um, basically I say, ouch, and I get up. Um, <clears throat> I suppose if it was a much worse fall, there's maybe first aid procedures that that one could be following. Um, maybe you could check yourself to see if there's um, uh, any injuries anywhere. Uh, make sure that you didn't break your phone or anything like that. Um, 
maybe look around and try to figure out what you slipped on. Um, is the floor wet? Do you need to clean up a spill? Um, is there clutter everywhere that you're tripping over? Um, do you have some extension cords tripping your feet that, you, that could make it safe, safer so that you don't fall next time? Um, <coughs> probably if you're in public, the thing that would need attending to is one's dignity. Um, you know, brush, brush off some of the dirt and make it look like you know what you're doing and not just some you know, drunk person uh, rolling around in the road. Um, but the real problem with trying to come up with two minutes of stuff to talk about when, when you fall over is that there just really isn't, you know, if somebody falls over and it takes them two minutes to compensate, then I think that they might need some different coping skills in their life. And, okay, let's stop there. <laughs> that was good. See, like, I would rather just go on to the next level. Um, wait. Sorry. No, you're fine. That's what I meant to do. That's so her average was 200 that day. This app is crazy. But See, I, you know my voice is so nice. So this is your range. Right oh, this here. is my, my prescribed. She just recorded it just for that segment that I just asked her. Uh, th this is a, like the prescribed range length that you set that just. Yeah, that's where you want to But then I put this one 10 higher because I, I don't want to jump around as much. Yeah, and intonation, you're going to go. What's your target range? 180. Because oh. intonation, you're going to go at least 15. Yeah. Higher when you're you know, 15? doing your up because this app is like, oh, that's for somebody. Do you see why I was so caught off guard last week when we were using cell phones? Because I've become so but reliant I on that. I think it was an off week. Yeah. I, I do think it was an off week, but... Well, I've been having a harder time. Like, the more I practice, the harder time. Her throat I'm stuff. I'm having a harder time uh, keeping my throat shut. Because uh, I practice more, so I feel like I naturally talk like this, but then they naturally talk like don't focus and stuff. Mm -hmm. She also rated, like, her effort and discomfort and stuff much higher. Yeah. Do you think that can I just go to this level? <laughs> Keep going with two minutes. Okay. <laughs> the next one is you are hungry. This is two minutes? Yeah. Um yeah, I'm pretty much always hungry. Like even after I've eaten, the idea of eating appeals to me. Um I've gone back to the donuts twice now. I've had six. And I think, you know, I want at least four more. I really love buffets. Um, I weigh myself before and after a meal. I'll gain, a, I'll gain like five pounds in one meal sometimes. Um, nowadays, that can kind of cause some discomfort. Um, I don't think my stomach can stretch as easily as it used to be when I was um, like 195 pounds. Um, um, I, I actually like I like fancy food, but I really don't appreciate it because I usually just go to Taco Bell um, and McDonald's and Burger King. Um, that's where I had breakfast today. Um, I really like their breakfast burritos. It kind of is like combining Taco Bell and McDonald's at the same time. And the idea of getting hot sauce in McDonald's is appealing. <coughs> um, I like spicy food. I like to um, put a lot of sriracha on every meal I make at home. Um, I just cooked this three pound pork roast yesterday. Uh, so yeah, it was so really good. Um, I have this uh, sriracha salt. It's like sriracha sauce mixed with salt and just kind of covered it with that to make it spicy. Um, it took like an hour and a half, but it came out really good. Uh, and we had some Brussels sprouts with it. Um, yeah, I really could talk about food for hours, but it, I kind of start to bore myself. <coughs> The Brussels sprouts were pretty good. We put some cauliflower in there and some, some cabbage and um, some snap peas and just sauteed it all on a couple of different oils, a bunch of seasoning. Um, and we, uh, we had that with the pork and uh, it was a pretty good meal. Um, and tonight I have to cook dinner for my girlfriend and I'm, gonna, I'm trying to not just use the leftovers from yesterday but make something new also. Because I'll have to tell her if I made her leftovers or something. <laughs> So then is your wife going to be there? Um, no, she's going to a different thing. Okay. What was the average of that one? Um, 318. 318. What's your passion yeah, about food? <laughs> so the average pitch is 318? Uh, yeah. So something that could be causing like your vocal strain is if you're consistently talking too high. You might actually want to try to bring it down a little bit, if, especially if your target is do you like your, your voice at 180? Or do you like it? I actually want to go higher. Okay, so 
I, I think mean, it's I true. Think but shooting for two hundred is good, but I just I'm just thinking going forward with that hand pop is really hard to see on. If you're consistently seeing like super high numbers, it you might just want to sh shoot for two hundred because if you're going super high, you could be straining your pay attention or anything you notice. So mm -hmm. more and the, and I know the app that I'm using. Um, the Eva app kind of starts you at 220, and I'm kind of like, this is because everything's pre recorded, so they don't have like, here's your range. <coughs> and so they, they have to do Is that a different app? 220s and 260. Yeah, that's um, yeah, I can show it. It has like a. Oh, is it like a tutorial? Yeah, but then like for each, for each, uh, you know, for each lesson at the end, they actually have like a, it'll measure your pitch. Oh, wow. And so there's certain activities. Um, Yeah, well, I definitely would keep a clear design in mind, even though you want your pitch to be higher, and maybe during the summer with the new clinicians, it will be ready to that for that. That's definitely probably why your yeah. voice is feeling strange. Like a new screen, you know, like a higher pitch. And just yeah. So this, this, this also is like a, a slide thing where they're like, um, yeah. and I did the opposite way, but you can kind of try to like oh, go gotcha. within, within the arrow. And so I sat there for a long time and so good. That's good. Also, flaws. Warm ups too. Like areas where, yeah. There's definitely like a lot of flaws in my voice where, like, if I slide certain ways, I'm just like, I can't do that right now. Like with that vowel. Okay. Next one. Oh, also, I just made the side note. Remember when sick for Professor Zerkeed was asking you about reflux? Um, or acid reflux? Um, you said that you use a lot of like sriracha and spicy sauce. That could probably be a cause of. Yeah, I, don't, I don't really have a reflux so I just I do like a two week heartburn treatment and I'm good for like a, a year on it. Okay. So it's like, it's like very minor or whatever. Um, so okay. I didn't have spicy foods for a couple of years once and like changed anything. <laughs> <laughs> then I brought it back. Your, your, I'm trying to think what would be good to talk about for a while. For a while I was like just using mustard. I was like, this is so bland. <laughs> so your internet goes out. Um, okay, if my internet goes out, then I tend to go crazy. Um, I really need to be connected to the internet at all times. <coughs> Which, uh, <coughs> you know, sounds strange for somebody who doesn't carry a cell phone, but um, when I'm home, I want to be connected, and when I'm out, I want to just see the world. Um, but we actually have to call a specific number to report the outage. And the first time we had, first time my internet went out, I found out the only way to find out that number was to look it up on the website. And yeah, that was kind of a catch-22. So eventually, we now have a text file that we open up, which tells us the number to call and which menus to go through in advance so that we can just interrupt them and talk to the human being. Um, they always make you do this stupid dance, turn off the modem, turn on the modem. It takes like eight minutes to resync. And then at the end, it, it has not fixed the problem because I usually did that before I called them. Um, and they make you do it again. It's just so frustrating. Um, and then they you know, ask a bunch of stupid questions. And eventually, they just have to send somebody over and swap out their modem. And there's like nobody ever really knew what was wrong with anything anyway. And it just feels like this Kafka uh, mountain of incompetence. <laughs> but um, fortunately, it hasn't happened very often. Uh, we had an issue about a year ago where they had to relay the telephone cable to our house like eight times in a month because they just couldn't get their, their shit together. And that was when I switched from DSL to cable and got a, a higher speed for less money. And then they since then bumped it up for free. So now I get like 120 megabits or something. Yeah, I really like a 1080p movie in like eight minutes or something. Pretty happy with that. One thing this app doesn't have is total time elapsed. I have it here, but I can turn it around. That was good. Why don't they have that? That's good. Um, that one had my average at 195. Okay, good. Does that feel less? Yeah. Good advice, Kayla. I do notice the difference, too, when Lori Thomas is so I know she. I don't even notice it. And you're not going to realistic, but when you're training in the program, it's just a great thing to do. And I do hear a more older president when you just have better, I think, just better posture. 
You're so funny. I'm like, put your arm down, and then you switch it to the other arm. So <laughs> yeah, that was so funny. I love it. Was like, and then you switch it to the other arm, and I was just like, she definitely didn't realize that. That's only It's okay. Yes. I was shocked you were at this level. I was like, wow. Right. Makes sense? Yeah, it does. It totally does. Um, okay. Right? Can I call people? That's like the ultimate test. Yeah. <laughs> what? So I like prank call people. Call people. Because uh -huh. if it's like a business relationship, they might be looking it up and know. There you go, call it. It's the real test. Um, okay, go hold on. Ask five people in the phone book if the refrigerator is running. <laughs> You're walking and it starts to rain. I was considering what I do in the situation today because um, it's, it seems like the um the trade off of, of the effort of carrying an umbrella being worth the reward of having an umbrella is only ever worth it if it's already raining. Um, and I really just I don't like carrying heavy packs, and I generally would just think I'll just get a little wet, and that's better off than um carrying a heavy pack. I actually do have a really small pink Hello Kitty umbrella that would fit into my backpack for pretty nicely that I got at the thrift store. <laughs> but um, I don't know, I just would walk in the rain and, and, and let myself get wet, in, in this type of weather anyway. Um, a long time ago I was scared of thunder, or scared of lightning, and then I um, took a self-hypnosis course on, on how to not be scared of that, and it worked. That was kind of what I did for fun in seventh grade after school, was hypnotize myself. I was, I was a weird kid. And so, yeah, I mean, that's really about all I have to say about the rain. I hadn't thought of it like that. Mm -hmm. Still have a minute left. I still have a minute left. Um, so, I mean, I why really, were you scared of the rain? Um, I don't know. I think just um, it was always a big deal with, with the thunder, thunderstorms. Like, anytime there's a thunderstorm, my dad would make everybody go and unplug all the televisions and electric stuff. Like, the lightning's going to get us. And, um, it was just kind of a big to-do. Like, I don't unplug anything in the thunder nowadays. And, you know, now that I'm an adult, I have, I have most of the stuff I care about behind a UPS a battery backup, and that serves to protect me from the storm. I really don't want, like, $3,000 televisions hooked up to a plug when lightning strikes, but if it's behind a UPS, I'm fine with that. Um, and um, I guess also we don't have antennas. Like back in the day, we had a bit, you know, an antenna for the television reception, and that was kind of a lightning, mag a lightning rod. Um, we actually had the remote control down in the basement where you could turn the orientation, and then the antenna would slowly turn to point the direction you wanted, so that you could tune each channel on your television. It's so old school. That's really good. Um, what do you mean if it's behind the UPS? Um, the the battery backup. The uninterruptible power supply. Oh. So you have, you know, the, the, the UPS is plugged into the wall and then your stuff, like your computer, is into the UPS. Most people just use it for the computer, but I put my TV in it too because I don't want it directly to the plug because if that lightning strikes take out things. Yeah. I had an Ethernet hub, it had eight ports, and after a lightning storm, the ports on the edge didn't work anymore, so it was like the electricity went through it and came out the two end ports and burned them out. I used to be really scared of thunder and lightning when I was little. Um, okay. Yeah, it was a big deal for me. What happened? What do you respond to a given problem of um, you burned your dinner? <laughs> so I burned my dinner. Um, hopefully, I don't have this problem t today when I'm cooking dinner for Beth. But um, if I do, I have these leftovers to fall back on. <laughs> um, but typically, like I'm not, I'm not too um, picky with my food. Um, I would, and I don't like to waste a resource, so um, if I burn my dinner, I typically will just eat it. And if, it, if, if a few of the bites taste really bad, then I'll just cook more food and mix it in. And now maybe it only tastes 80% burned, and then I'm like, not good enough, cook some more stuff in. <clears throat> now it tastes 60% uh, burned, and I'll just kind of keep preparing the food until it's edible and I can get it down. Um, I just really don't want to waste it, so you know, cook some rice and throw it in there. Um, <clears throat> Throw some Worcestershire sauce or some sriracha hot sauce. Um, throw in some fresh fruit. fruit um, pour a can of salsa over it. Just anything to sort of add some moisture and some stuff that isn't burned to it. Oh, that's a countdown. Um, Tell me what you're going to make tonight. Um, so tonight I have a bunch of uh, chicken somethings. I think they're chicken drumsticks. And so I guess I'm just going to bake them on a baking sheet with some sort of something on them. 
I tend to imagine barbecue sauce in that situation, but I don't really know if we have barbecue sauce. Um, I just know Beth is um, picky picky with her food. She's, she's very much a food snob and I'm a food slob and I don't really care what I eat. And, um, she had it once where I made her food and I wasn't quite ready and she was just like, do you just want to go to a restaurant? And I was like, I, I have all these things almost ready. Like, uh, I felt like so bad about it. But she actually felt bad because like in her family dinner's kind of a big deal and I like didn't even have I was like here's a microwave chicken like from yesterday do you want to eat it while I finish cooking the other food she was just like no and so maybe I shouldn't do the chicken like tonight does she have a favorite food um I don't I I just know what she doesn't like <laughs> that was funny it's snob or slob there's something else that you said that it's been a common thought but I wanted to bring it up oh have you always liked cooking um, I've always been indifferent to it. Like, I mean, it's just, it's easy. Like, just throw I hate ingredi it. ingredients plus heat. It doesn't matter what you do. Yeah. If you like what's going in and you're not picky about things mixing together or whatever, then just, I just spice think it. it. Takes so long. That, that, that's why I always try to cook a lot. Like, I try to get deep dishes and cook. So I'd eat it multiple days? Yeah. Like, yeah. like it was yesterday, it was the whole Brussels sprouts and, and the whole three pound pork and then, like, you know, a couple onions and pepper and a can of. These Indian beans that I don't really want to have anymore, so I just put it on top of pork <laughs> in the oven. Pork and beans. Just try to add, add, add. All right, thank you. Three more left. Um, what are you going to do if all your clothes are dirty? Say what? All your clothes are dirty. Um, I really hope that all my clothes never get dirty because I have like 750 clothes and I feel like that would be just like weeks of laundry and you know, yeah, 750 female clothes in my own spreadsheet, it was like zero a year ago, so, I mean, well there's things, but not things I'd wear in public, um, so like, um, yeah, it would be, we tried to get that behind in, la in laundry, um, Carolyn does the laundry, last time I, Took over laundry duties for a few months. The washing machine and the dryer broke, and I was kind of like, uh. I was like, I don't know if um, maybe you can do the laundry and I can just do some of these other things. And she took it back over, and I'm, I'm much happier. Um, we actually have now a fancy double laundry machine. It has like um, the standard five liters or gallons or whatever on the top, and on the bottom it's one. It'll do hand wash, like automatic hand wash. It's just like really gentle. It's a really small sidekick one, so you can do like your underwear and stuff down there at the same time as doing your normal clothes up there and um that's kind of nice it makes me almost wish i had two dryers because that's the bottleneck um we i actually bought color-coded um baskets at the thrift store so put our white clothes in the white basket put our colors in the colorful basket put the dark ones in the dark basket and i feel like that makes throwing your clothes in the dirty clothes like a game of basketball instead of a chore and then when you take them to the laundry they're already pre-sorted in the colors but then my wife was just like I never sort the colors out, and I was just like, oh, why am I doing this? I never do either. <laughs> I'm like, but we have the fancy washing machine now that has all these modes, like, yeah. can't we use them? What does it really accomplish? We feel better about ourselves? I like, <laughs> There's no control variable, really, where I'm, like, washing half the clothes the new way and half the clothes the old way to compare. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. It has, like, four bins to put stuff in for each load. Wow. It's like the pre-wash and... But I don't really know. We just have one. We only use the one, the detergent. Clothes must be very clean. <laughs> it has a towel mode. Oh, the steam mode, too. You can stuff the steam. The movie you want to see um, okay. Do you forget to pay a bill? Um, if it's a restaurant, then they probably say, why are you trying to leave without paying? Because I've definitely done that before an accident. And then just been like, oh, right. I just kind of thought it was taken care of. Whoops! Like, um, if it's a bill, um, if it's a bill, uh, most of my bills would just be um, online, and so I actually have them all set for automatic pay. And so if one didn't get paid, I would I would be like, what's happening? And I would need to check. Maybe I didn't have enough money in my bank account, and that's happened some since my wife is working and I'm not working. You know, slowly had to. Uh, move some of the bills over to her name just to kind of prevent that situation from happening as much. Because um, the money goes into her bank account, so it may as well be drawn from her bank account for paying the bills. <laughs> um, I've even graduated to shopping on a credit card <laughs> online. Um, 
But, yeah, for the most part, it's just an administrative problem to figure out what went wrong, and then to be like, sorry, can you maybe waive the late fee this month? So, like, Okay. All right, good job. That was awesome. All right, we're going to go on to intonation now. And also, just to let you know, so basically what happens is we reach these levels, which is great. Basically, you just, like, each level I just follow, you know, but um, since there's such a, like, a break between now and when the next semester starts, like, the summer session will start, um, um, I don't know, actually. Clinic, I think, opens May 29th or 30th. After Memorial Day. So after Memorial Day, I think. Um, so basically, even though you, well, like, I want you to keep practicing so much, when you start, you'll probably, the new clinician will probably start a few le le levels back just to make to make sure that you like didn't, because a lot of people like tend to go back a few times Makes without sense. practice. Yeah. Um, so just if you're like, wait, I've already packed this level, just to let you know. Um, <laughs> don't yeah, don't get mad. <laughs> Okay. I'm level seven. I'm a level nine imagination. All right. So now I'm gonna ha have you respond to some respond to a given problem using three sentences, and we're working on intonation. So that so we want two ups. Um, so imagine the one three five. They're all gonna be three or four. So yeah, we want them to all be three or four. Mm -hmm. If you want to do a thought to differentiate it, you can totally do that. I'll start doing that for my own practice. Okay. So try three average length sentences, and I want you to really try to think of two like two ups per sentence, technically. Um, you, oh wait, I'll take this. You lose an important piece of jewelry. You can use this. You can record if you want. Just okay. Okay, go. Um, I check the floor around me. And then I go to lost and found. And then I go to lost and found. Oh no, you're right. You're right. Wait. <laughs> no, you're right. I wanted to do two sentences. This says three. Um, that was awesome, and I loved how you took a pause in between, Be, like between two sentences, because it just seemed natural and it seemed like you weren't rushing it through. Yeah. No, but that's but that's what you do, like. If I'm talking and you ask me that question, I would have to think. I would probably freak out. I would probably then check my room. You know, like I would be thinking what I would be doing too. So it's not unnatural to take a pause. Um, someone steals your camera, your cell phone. I guess I, I realized that they've stolen it from me, so I might want to go to the, oh, I would go to the device locator, um, like Android device manager, or iOS has one. Good. You are out of dish soap. <laughs> um, I would check under the sink. Um, if none was found, I would get some shampoo from the bathroom. You're running late to a doctor's appointment. Um, I skip makeup steps. Um, and I don't type the address in the Navigate so I'm already in my car driving. But that's not, that's not a, a Tory Do you want to try it again? Yeah. Um, and I use my GPS late. You use your GPS late? Like later in the process. Oh. Um, All right, everybody. We're stopping. We're stopping? We're stopping already? Okay. Can we have like two minutes? Is that okay? Okay. Um, the line is very long at Target. Um, I leave my shopping cart and I check the other line. The television won't turn on. Um, I tried turning it on and off a few times, and then I check if it's plugged in. Um, you lose your Metro card. Um, I, 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 I just buy another Metro card, and later I look for it. You run a red light. Um, I 
trying to remember if I saw a camera. Um, and then I feel guilty for five seconds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Awesome. No more than five. <laughs> Good job. What a great way to end. Okay, so it's, I'm going to put everything. I'm wondering if maybe I could use. Do you, do you have a Gmail? Yeah, you have a Gmail.